This tutorial will cover fades. I'm going to show you how the fade cue works. Uh, it gives you very a lot of options. It can fade audio, video, groups, all kinds of stuff. So we'll get go through all the options and teach you how to kind of use that cue in a very powerful way that'll make you look like a rock star. The fade cue is a very powerful cue in QLab. You may not notice it at first, but once you start to do a lot of smoothing and wanting transitions to be seamless and not too sharp, you're going to want to use this cue. It can basically be used with almost every cue in QLab to make it better. Um, the, the fade cue I'll demo for you is, uh, first we're going to do a video fade and uh, audio fade and a title fade and also we're doing a fade on a cue list itself. So first thing I'm going to do is we're just going to set up a video file. Uh, I can just click and drag an image off my desktop or click on the video file itself and then link to that file. For this one here, I'm just going to drag in this first stage icon, which is just a JPEG. First thing off, it has no valid video service surface. QLab warns you when you're not really when you're missing something. And if you roll over that error, it'll kind of describe to you what's happening. No valid video surface means that I haven't set up this workspace yet to really deal with video properly. The way to quickly do that is you can click on this little gear icon down here. And it'll just show you, you go to video, and you'll notice I have no surfaces in place yet. So you hit the plus sign, and you can actually see, I'm just going to hit new empty surface. And then when I hit the plus sign here, assign screens, you can see that that's my main computer screen right there. So I'll pick that and noting the 1920 by 1200 size. And I need to enter that in here to make it fit appropriately. 1920, and then the tab key moves between fields, makes it a little easier. And then tab to enter the information in there. You can resize this window either by clicking and dragging here and also by readjusting this so you can see more of what's going on. If you want to learn more about surfaces, we have a separate tutorial on that alone. But that's really all you need right here is to make sure we set up a surface and we can call this, you know, Mac screen. And again, tabbing to get out of that field so that it takes that name. If you skip that step, it will default back to the original name you had. All right, so let me go back to uh, the, the graphic that we put in here in the video queue. And we just pick the video surface that we just created in here to tell it to be that file. For some reason, the X does not go away once you assign that. You have to kind of click off of the screen, and then it'll kind of redo that. Uh, currently, in this video queue, we have it set to preserve aspect ratio. I don't really care one way or the other. I'm going to just uncheck that so it fills it up and looks nice. I'm also going to open the audition window here, which is basically a second monitor for you. A lot of times when you work in QLab, you have a home screen, your main monitor, but you're either projecting out to a projector or to another monitor or a bunch of other options. So the audition window is basically a way for you to have that second monitor or video projector screen available to you when you don't actually have have that physically there. So we're going to be sending our video to the audition window so we can continue to look and see what's going on here in QLab itself in the main workspace window. So in the fade queue, you'll notice first of all just in this video file, when you drop in a static image like a JPEG for example, and if you hit play, um, it will, it'll just stay there. Video cues, that's a video, actually runs out. And unless you check under the time and loops window, the infinity loop, it'll stop and end itself. But still images, interestingly enough, will loop automatically just when they come in. So for this to fade in and out, I'm just going to stop that. I'm going to also switch this to active cue tab so you can kind of see what's going on as we do that. To access this active queue information, you click here and that'll show and hide the active queue and queue list tabs um, so you can see what's going on. So in this video file, which is a still image, under display and geometry, you'll note that right now its opacity is set at 100%. Which means when it plays, you'll see 100% of it. So we're going to add a fade queue in it by clicking and it'll come in below wherever the playhead is. And click and drag this file into the fade queue to assign it to this image right here. The reason the X is here now, as you can see from no fade parameters have been enabled, pick at least one thing to fade. 
So in this case, we're going to fade opacity. Right? So currently it's set at 100%. So we're going to fade it out. So we're going to change this, and we're going to go to Geometry, and then click on Opacity here, and have this be 0. So just put in 0, tab out of the field again, and uh, that should do it. So what's going to happen here is this video file is going to play. We're going to click the um, Follow command, which means it's going to automatically start to play and leave and go to the next queue, which is the Fade JPEG, the Fade Stage JPEG queue. And this is a five second fade, which is always determined from the action amount. You can double click on this and change that. And so this queue is going to go from 100% opacity to zero opacity once we do that. So we can just check out the uh, audition window and you'll see it slowly fade in there. I was like, slowly fade out there. That's right. Often people want a cue to fade in and then to fade out when it's finished. And that is a little, this is a little counterintuitive, but once you kind of get it, it, it goes pretty smoothly. So we're going to add another fade cue directly above uh, the, the fade out cue. So we'll just, I'm just going to rename this by double clicking on it and just have it be out. And this one, we're going to target it by clicking and dragging this guy down here. You can also rename uh, target fade cues by double-clicking here in the target tab and assigning this number. In this case, it's one. So you could double-click here and put in number one instead of dragging it in. So in this case, we want to start with the main video file at zero opacity because we don't want it to be on when we first do that, right? So I click in there, I hit the tab key to get out of there. And now we're going to tell this that we want it to come in to be 100% opacity. So now what's going to happen is, if we click here, it'll start this, no opacity, be, it'll be invisible, and then it'll slowly fade in with the fade cue for five seconds, and during that time we have it set to immediately go and fade out. We don't want to do that. We want it to be up for a while. So we're going to, I'm going to put in, let's put in eight seconds. So it'll fade in, it'll be actually 100% opacity for three seconds, because five seconds for the fade time. And then it'll go and fade out over five seconds and then be there. Now, you can also tell it to stop target when done. Um, and that's always a good idea to get clean up your resources. So I'm going to set that to stop target for done. On the out part, because on the in part, you want to leave it there so it's still running. So when you're ready to kill it, it'll do that. So let's give it a try and see what happens. Fades up. Hangs out for three more seconds. And then it's going to slowly fade out over five seconds. And stop. Beautiful. So it's very easy to retarget this from a JPEG to a video file. If we just go to our desktop, find a video we want, you can drag and drop that in here to replace that. And that will automatically retarget to these other two fade ins and fade outs. The only thing you have to remember to do if you're putting a video in, it doesn't auto loop. Uh, in this case, I usually do an infinite loop on these background video files. So a JPEG image will automatically just loop if it's up, but video won't. So it would stop early if we didn't check this infinite loop button. And uh, we want to do that instead of having to just play once through because it's only a four second video. And our entire process is much more than that, right? It's a total of uh, 13 seconds. So I'm going to hit infinite loop. And now, make sure the audition window's in the front. We hit go, audition, and it'll fade in. Fade is just finishing there, hangs out for three seconds. And then it'll slowly fade back out again. And then stop itself. And I did not have stop target when done checked here in this case. That's why it's still looping. Again. Once we have this all ready to go, we'll hit the addition window. It'll start playing. It fades in. It's up for three seconds. And it'll slowly fade out. And it'll stop itself at the end. There you go. So the fade cue on an audio file works exactly the same way, um, with some subtle differences and important differences. So first of all, we just grab an audio file. You can either, again, just click 
on the audio file itself to bring one in. I'm just going to click and drag one from my desktop from a folder I have set up here, a little WAV file. And you do want to make sure that you assign it to what output you want to do. Uh, I'm running it out of my Duet, which is a little Apogee device, amazing sound card, external sound card. It lets me bring it back in easily for what I'm recording with here. I could also send it to the built-in output, whatever, whatever you want. These are all just outputs that I have on my computer available to send out audio. Um, so you can click on the file. It should just play normally. You have your two volume, your levels up here, your master, and the two channels that they're assigned to. Um, these are basically left and right, both at zero, not zero, at um, just, you know, balance levels, the, the nice full volume, basically. So here's the file. And you can always stop any file like that by hitting the escape key. That will give you a nice slow fade out uh, to deal with just, you know, moving on. You can also click this tab down, this little button down here, which will bring up these controls, including the cue list tab and the active cues controls. I'm going to leave those open so that it kind of helps us see exactly what's going on inside Cue Lab during these tutorials. I'm also going to clean this up a little bit so you can see a little bit more what's going on uh, in the levels and stuff. So same idea with a fade cue. You just click on the fade cue. We're going to add that, to, in this case, to this guy. So we're going to pair them up. You click and drag him in so that it targets this cue here. Again, this volume here is already uh, up, so we want to take that down. We could take down the left and right channels and leave the master alone because we can just affect those two. Currently, this will be z not play anything since channels one and two are down all the way. Um, we can, I'll just demo that. So even though the file is playing, as you can see here, there's no audio coming out anymore. So this is uh, has no fade parameters set, so we want to click on this and we want to tell it what levels we want this thing to be at. So um, we can either slide these up into position. Um, Qlib has a sweet little thing where you hit the option key and click within these bars. First it'll go to mute, and then it'll go to full, which is a quick, easy way to get to those, those places. You want to have the master and the two channels up to full, or whatever level you want it to fade to. So now this is going to start at zero, and it's going to immediately move on if we click the follow button here. It's going to immediately move on and fade up for five seconds. So here we go. So same deal with fade out. Basically click where you want the fade out to go. We're going to put it uh, just after this fade cue. We're going to say we'll wait infinite until we decide to send it on its merry way. So you want to target that fade cue by clicking and dragging your audio file into it. And then in this case, we want to tell it to fade out. Now you think these were already faded out, but they're not. You need to kind of adjust it once to let it know that that's what you're dealing with. So just moving it up and down real quick, we'll kind of assign those, those things to it. I also going to check stop target when done to let it know that I do want to end this thing and just not have it you know, running in the background. Um, you can also loop audio cues, which if you check out the audio tutorials, it'll teach you about all those things as well. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. We're going to have it fire. It'll be a five second fade in. You can see it's now running and the next fade out cue is waiting hit the go button with the audition button and you'll see it act on the, the cue music and fade out and stop at the very end. So another great fade tool is to really to fade uh, titles which you can also do the same fade I'm about to do here with video as well um, and camera cues as well and even quartz composer and siphon sources coming in from the outside. But for this, we're just going to show you a simple title. Up this guy right in here and add a title cue. And you can edit the um, different features on a title cue by uh, going here into text and type in, you know, the cue. And you can adjust that by clicking on the A here, which will show uh, the all the different parameters here. You can pick any kind of font you want. Uh, you can resize it however you like. You want to pick a bigger font depending on how big the screen so it doesn't get too crunchy. If you pick something really small 
and then blow it up on the screen here, it's going to look crunchy. So you want to get close to what it's going to finally look like. Uh, you can change the color here. And we'll go over something along the Q vibe. Uh, obviously, you can change the, the uh, just any parameters that you can do for text, you can do here as well. Um, once that's kind of done, you pick that in here. And you have the Q here. Now, we're going to run a fade Q on it. So we're going to click fade Q. We're going to assign the fade Q as the target. Give a target to the fade Q. Um, and when I'm working in this, this window here will show you under the geometry tab, will kind of show you what's going to go on with the fade cue we're going to do. So we're not going to be fading opacity or audio this time. We're going to fade rotation and scale. And so to do that, you really want to kind of go back to the original one here and look at the video geometry and see where it starts at. This is kind of where its initial position is. We are going to eventually make it um, zero. So we can't really see it and have it come forward and grow, get bigger, um, closer to the size of this here, which I could scale that up now either by clicking on it and scaling on it. But since if I just work in that field, it'll automatically assign that um, as a selected thing since I've now changed it here within this, uh, in this setup here. And I'm going to go back to the queue itself. And in here, I want to mess, I'm going to mess with the geometry. So for example, I'm going to click on Z and rotate it on the Z axis. I'll just do it uh, upside down once, so 180 degrees. You can either type it in or just flip it around that way. And then we're going to also mess with it on the Y axis. So we'll do that 90 degrees, which will give it that nice little kind of flat, suddenly appearing out of nowhere look. And uh, anywhere in there, it doesn't, doesn't matter too much. And then Z, and we do the same thing on the Z axis. I'm going to go and just flip that over. Why don't we just flip it a full 180, and that'll give it something to do when it, when it comes in. 270 is good. And then just to finish this off, I am going to take this 2-0 here. For some reason, it, and, it, and it is locked, so um, it lets you do that. But it doesn't let you type a 0 in there, which is interesting. I don't know why exactly. But you can drag it all the way down, and it'll become 0. So now we ha should have it be invisible and it should rotate on the X, Y, and Z axis as it comes forward. I'm going to click here on the follow to have it automatically go and start the fade here. So let's see what we ended up with. Absolutely nothing. So obviously I did something wrong. Let's figure out what we did wrong here exactly. So it looks like, oh, I didn't check the rotation parameter because it doesn't didn't take the rotations that I did into consideration. So it just stayed in that flat and visible area. So now that I've chosen both of those, it knows it's going to end up in this position, but it's going to start when I click on the title queue in an invisible nothing position. It did zoom in that other setup um, to come up to this scale. It's just that you didn't see it because it was still flat to us. So let's try it one more time. And this time I'm pretty confident that there it comes in and looks pretty cool. And these titles are nice because they will appear on top of whatever graphics you want to put on top underneath them and stuff. So if we throw in just a graphics here, a graphic file um, on the screen, and uh, we'll just move him to the to be the first position, so it's the first thing that fires, and we'll make sure that we have him placed in his geometry to be uh, in the back a little bit. We'll just go all the way to the back itself, and uh, I am going to have it be full screen. And I also want to make sure it's on the same, the correct surface. And we'll have that just auto follow. And I also want to make sure that it's looping so it doesn't just stop once the title comes in. So now we should have the bubbles come in. It'll automatically have the cue come flying forward and it'll just end right here at the end. So let's have a look. Fantasmico, the amazing fade cue. So let's say we have all this and we're happy with it and it looks good, but we want to fade this out and end it. So one way to do that is we'd have to add a fade cue to these two things and fade them to nothing. An easier way to do that is to fade a cue list th itself. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to add a new cue list and we'll call it, um, you know, my fades. And within this queue list here, we're going to put a fade queue. And we're going to target the main queue list 
uh, fade, queue, fade main queue list as its target. And what we're going to tell it to do here is we want to say what do we want it to do. So really what we want it to do is take the opacity of um, the whole thing to zero, right? We want to get rid of the, the bubbles and we want to get rid of the um, titles and we want to uh, stop the target when they're finished. So now if we go ahead and start this queue here, we go into this queue list, hit go. It comes in and it's chugging along there happily. We go to this fade queue here and we hit go and it's going to fade out the entire pile of stuff there. And it takes care of the whole mess. You can target huge audio lists. You can target anything you want in that queue list and it'll take that out for you. The amazing fade queue.